The RCMP and BC Coroner Service are investigating the circumstances around a deadly avalanche over the weekend near Revelstoke. About 200 people were gathered Saturday on Boulder Mountain for an annual snowmobile event when a wall of snow came down. Two men, both from Alberta, were killed. 31 others were injured. The lead forecaster for the Vancouver Island Avalanche Centre says it could happen here. We'll have more on that part of the story and local reaction in a moment. But we begin with the latest from Boulder Mountain in the province's interior. The search for survivors continued today in the aftermath of a deadly avalanche near Revelstoke. Police are looking for any abandoned vehicles and canvassing hotels in the area, but say they believe everyone has been accounted for. There were about 200 people on Boulder Mountain Saturday at an annual gathering known as the Big Iron Shootout. Riders pushed the limits of their machines, taking them to the top of the mountain. Two men, both from Alberta, were killed. 31 others were injured after a wall of snow engulfed dozens of people. Came right down. It's like a tidal wave would come down. I kind of hear a lot of snowmobiles starting and people start to scream. I look up, it was coming down. And then I just had time to start my skidoo. And I turned, I did about 20 feet. And then I must have went up 10 feet in the air and 50 feet further into another skidoo. It just hit us, knocked us flat on our face and buried us. Well, it happened so fast you couldn't do nothing. It was just a bunch of screaming and a big ball of snow. The Canadian Avalanche Centre had issued an advisory about extreme conditions in the area. Questions are being raised about whether mountain access should be restricted when avalanche warnings have been issued. When you engage in the behaviour of some of the individuals uh, that took place on the weekend, uh, you can prevent that. BC's Solicitor General says it's fortunate more people weren't lost in the avalanche. Cash Heed flew over the site Sunday and says those people nearby who scrambled to help dig people out prevented further tragedies. Upwards of 30 uh, to 40 people were pulled from the snow and that's because of that community and others in the Revelstoke area coming together. Heed says a comprehensive framework has been set up across several ministries to deal with off-road vehicles. Registration, licensing and helmet use will all be looked at and Heed says plans should be in place by November 2011. But at the end of the day, these people made their decisions with all of the warnings that were in place. The death toll could have been much worse because of the size of the slide, but snowmobilers remain opposed to having their backcountry fun regulated. The executive director of the BC Snowmobile Federation says rules restricting access to the backcountry would be unenforceable. The RCMP and the BC Coroner Service are conducting simultaneous investigations into the circumstances surrounding the tragedy. Many people asking today if this type of deadly avalanche could happen here. The lead forecaster for the Vancouver Island Avalanche Centre says the situation isn't exactly the same as in BC's interior, but the danger for a fatal incident exists. He says Vancouver Islanders should know avalanche conditions here are not much different. And tonight, response is coming in to proposed regulations in the backcountry. Representatives of various snowmobile associations say the new restrictions may not be enforceable. Here on Vancouver Island, one snowmobile retail retailer says education, not Regulation is the key to better safety. More from A News reporter Gord Kerbis in Courtney. Courtney Motorsports is the ultimate store for anyone looking for high-performance toys for recreation, including motorcycles, ATVs, sea doos and snowmobiles. The store's owner, Stuart Graham, was in the interior when he heard of the tragedy in Revelstoke. It's not a surprise. There was a, an avalanche warning. There have been in that area for quite some time. Um, it's unfortunate. But everyone knows the risk going into it. Graham himself has been snowmobiling for 14 years. He says he and his customers understand risks are involved, but stresses they can be minimized if you take precautions. Safety is key, and a lot of safety is common sense, especially on these machines. You know, you don't go back there when it's snowing real hard. You don't go back at night. You don't go back alone, and you don't go without safety gear. That's why his store carries and promotes the sale of equipment like beacons, shovels, and probes to anyone thinking about heading to the backcountry. That terrain is becoming more accessible as these machines get more powerful in answer to customer demands. You know, the consumer, especially our high-end machines that are fourteen and $15,000, the secret to sell them, to, you know, retailing them is... The more power, lighter, quicker. Graham understands why the government is now contemplating introducing new snowmobile regulations. He just isn't sure they'd be enforceable. If it's going to be an issue where they're going to have to monitor it and you're going to have to stop and it's going to be tax and it's going to be another, you know, become a, a real pain for everybody, is it time? I don't know. He says he would much prefer to see the money and effort go into education rather than regulation. Certainly, everyone should be better educated in the dangers of it. Before they go out, a lot of people, you know, um, 
perhaps aren't. Safety first. If, if it's a matter of spending millions of dollars, spend it on safety. Last year, there were 19 deaths associated with snowmobile avalanches. Advocates of the regulations say that is why tighter restrictions are needed. In Courtney, Gord Kerbis, A News.